Hi and welcome to another Salesforce Technologies tutorial with myself, Jonathan Fox. And today's video, we're going to be exploring actually how we can create a an integration um, with AWS to host our customer identity solution. So why would we need this? We've got an experienced cloud portal, for example, and we want a place to store um, a customer identity um, and perhaps we don't just use Salesforce uh, perhaps we have our Salesforce experience cloud portal for our support site um, but we have a website that also has an e-commerce that isn't hosted on Salesforce and a bunch of other things and we want a central location for our customer identity uh, so we're going to look at a AWS Cognito for our customer um, identity access management uh, service there are others out there you know for example auth zero um you could look at using a different infrastructure as a service platform that has these services available uh, maybe google cloud um or azure um, but we're going to use aws um, and we're going to use cognito um, as the service so to start with what you want to do is you want to create a a free um account on AWS and you want to head over to the services section on AWS and search for um, Cognito and within Cognito what you then want to do is create a user pool from here what you can do is configure the various options such as um, signing options being username email or phone number with it being compatible with Salesforce, um, we, we're going to use email and username just to keep it as feeling as much like the Salesforce flow as possible for those of you who aren't used to um, different identity providers and just solely using on Salesforce. But we could also use phone number to log in because we're not logging in directly into Salesforce. Uh, we're logging into Cognito, really. And that allows Cognito to handle the authentication. So we could use phone number if we want, but we'll just stick with uh, email. Uh, we could use username as well if we wanted to. And again, with uh, AWS Cognito, username doesn't have to be an email address like it does within Salesforce. From there, what you then want to do is configure the next steps, such as password policies, any multi-factor authentication that you may want, um, as well as um, account recovery, such as um, email or SMS if you want, some of these services cost so choose them dependent on what your AWS account offers and what you're prepared to spend obviously weighing up how much uh, usage they may get uh, versus email versus SMS for example and there's some nice other options if and else statements there we'll just go for um, authentic in fact we'll do no MFA on this one and self sign up so you want them to be able to self register uh, enable self-registration and as we go down here we're going to have a look at this uh, section here um, verification the nice feature of um, AWS Cognito is that it can send them an email or an SMS to confirm their account before actually creating it in Salesforce for you meaning that you don't get spammed full of bogus accounts you know bot users um, you know who troll websites and things like that and spam you um, so you can do uh, a verification code gets sent to an email address or an SMS and they have to enter it um, in the Cognito um, UI uh, before it then triggers the creation through the registration handler on Salesforce for the creation of the user account. Um, other options that we have available um, such as required attributes and any other custom attributes that you may want and then we can look at how we send the email. If you have SES with uh, AWS, you could use that, or you could just send with Cognito. And then integrating your app, you want to give a pool name, which is the pool of users. This could be your app, uh, your experience cloud site's name, your app's name, you know, the service that you're providing, just a useful name so you know what that pool of users pertains to. And you would want to use the um, Cognito hosted um, UI um, 
you can use the SDK and develop your own UI, host that on a web server somewhere or even host it on AWS. Um, but for ease of use, we're going to use the Cognito hosted UI, um, pre-built for us, makes it easy. Create a, a domain that's uh, then appended with your um, AWS region um, and Amazon Cognito there. It can be anything you want. Give that your, the same my domain as your uh, Experience Cloud site or something like that if you really wish. Um, or you can use a custom domain if you have um, your uh, domain set up on AWS. Public, leave it as public for the app type. Enter the client name again, similar to your pool name, something that references where it's been used or why it's been used. And then here is the callback URL. For the time being, use a random callback URL because we don't have the callback URL at this very moment in time and then click next, which will then allow us to review and update. I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't need to create another, but you would use a random URL for the callback URL and I'll show you why in a second, because what you want to do now is head over to Salesforce and go to auth providers and you want to create yourself an auth provider. Here, what you want to do is click new, you want to choose open ID connect and then you want to fill out your details here. So the name, I used Cognito because we're using the Cognito service. We'll have a look at the one that I used here. I used Cognito and then I used, I, I entered a consumer key and consumer secret. Now I had to save without entering the callback URL because I get the callback URL when I complete my auth provider configuration here. However, I don't have that yet because I can't click save until I give it a consumer key and consumer secret. And to get that, I had to click save first. To get your consumer key and consumer secret, what you want to do is head over to, um, bah, bah, bah. you want to head over to um, app integrations, go down to your uh, app and cl client anal analytics down at the bottom here and you'll see your app. And then what you want to do is copy this client ID, show your client secret and copy the secret. And then you want to pop those into the two fields here. You then want to choose the authorization endpoint. Now your authorization endpoint is the URL that you, the, the domain that you set for your user pool on Cognito, all the way to the end forward slash OAuth2 for all of them, and then slash authorize token and user info for the respective um, attributes here. As we scroll down, you want to create a registration handler because this is what will create your user, assign it to a particular contact and account within Salesforce, and you want to choose execution, execute the registration as and pick a user. So perhaps you want to create an integration user or a user specific for this use case so you can isolate their functionality from everything else within Salesforce, especially if this user um, you know, perhaps could get deactivated in the future. You don't want to use that. So you'd want a specific integration user here. When you click save, you can then scroll down and this is where you'll get your callback URL here. And this is the one that you'll use to enter into your user pool configuration where you scroll down, click edit, change your random URL that you put in when, when, setting up your user pool within Cognito and put in the actual URL of your Salesforce Experience Cloud site, which is this one here for me. As you can see, you can actually use the main org as well if you wanted to uh, self sign up to your org. This was just for me for proof of concept and testing, so please ignore that. You wouldn't ever want someone to self sign up to your org because they get the keys to the kingdom and get into your internal org for self sign up. So you wouldn't want that. Perhaps you could potentially use it if you wanted somebody to self set themselves up on an internal um, intranet web app that is only accessible by employees. You don't want to create them by default, but you want to allow them access to a service. You might want that, but in general, wouldn't um, recommend it. So you only want to use the callback URL for your experience cloud site, which you can see um, would be actually, if we click expand here, it's the experience cloud site callback URL here, which is the bottom one. This top one here is for the actual Salesforce org itself. So you want to make sure that you actually click ex the expand uh, sec expanded section here and choose callback URL here. Once you've done that, 
you're ready to go. Your AWS, uh, your experience cloud site will now use AWS um, Cognito for um, customer identity and access management. So for example, if I head to experience cloud sites and I'm just going to grab the URL of my experience cloud site here, I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to open an incognito window and I head to my experience cloud site. Obviously I'm not authenticated and I could remove this so that it always forces login through, uh, through cognito. Um, but we haven't done that yet. We don't need to have a look at that right on this session, um, but we could make it so it forces and always opens in this view. They enter their username and their password, which could be username, email address or phone number because we could configure that incognito and their password providing they've already set up. If they haven't, they click sign up and they're displayed with the attributes that you've defined within your user pool setup for Cognito. Here you can type in something like Jonathan Fox, one, two, three, four. And I can enter an email address. Um, and a random password. And when I click sign up, I'm prevent, uh, presented with a verification code screen. This is where I would get an email, and we've just got the email now, um, to provide me with a verification code for my uh, AWS account. I sat, use my uh, verification code, and now I'm into the, uh, the, the customer community, the um, Experience Cloud site. Having a look at that, we can then see from users that I have been set up here. Um, the one that I just set up was this one here. Um, you can see a couple of different tests that I've done, um, but that sets you up as a user. Um, you want to add logic into your Apex class. Um, your registration handler will be a generic one unless you create the logic yourself. So you can create the auto generated um, registration handler, which will just assign you to, I've done it to a random account, creates a contact to a random account, and then takes the um, attributes from data.email, last name, first name, uses the attribute map to get the username that you put into uh, AWS Cognito, and creates a user. Obviously, you want to have a bit more logic and think about how you do your account and contact architecture, because you don't want every account, uh, every contact being set up going to the same account. That involves um, inherent sharing, which could expose data that you really wouldn't want. So maybe think about creating an account rather than uh, searching for an account through Sockel there and creating personal accounts perhaps or an account uh, per contact uh, and the hierarchy you might have there. But that's all architectural decisions that you can think about going forward. So I hope that was really useful, quick tutorial on how to use AWS Cognito, um, Amazon Cognito as a customer identity and access management platform. Now there are others out there. There's Auth0, you know, you could use um, features available on Google or Microsoft, um, but I wanted to explore, explore um, Amazon Cognito and AWS um, as there didn't seem to be as many tutorials out there for it. And as uh, Cognito doesn't support SAML um, as an identity provider itself, it uses OpenID Connect. Um, I wanted to show that as a slightly different demonstration and a different video of how you can use it and what the art of the possible might be. Until next time, thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video and share it, and stay tuned for any other videos we might have in the future. Thank you.